Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to be looking at some O-Gage rolling stock from a manufacturer that I've never tried before. The manufacturer's name is Darstead or Darsteed and I found them while browsing Ellis Clark Trains' website and they seem to be a fairly prominent dealer of their stuff. As far as I can gather, they are a manufacturer that produces O-Gage template rolling stock and I know when you hear template you think 1940s toys but looking at the photos of some of their stuff, they certainly don't look to be toy grade. They seem quite decent actually and the prices, while they're not toy grade prices, they seem to be priced in a very compelling fashion. And in fact, if this turns out decent, it's gonna be a very good value model. And so if this video does work out well, I'm not sure if it will or not at the moment, but if it does and you are interested in some good value O-Gage rolling stock, check out Ellis Clark Trains and check out the Darstead or Darsteed range and see what it's like, not sponsored or anything. I have bought this wagon. Okay, are you ready? Enough waffling. So here it is. It doesn't reveal very much, does the box, but this is a bogey tanker wagon. That's all I know. And this cost me £69.50, which is a pretty nice price. But it doesn't end there because there is a bulk buy discount. Now, in double O gauge, when you bulk buy stuff, you can expect to save a couple of pounds per wagon, right, or whatever. For this one, you can buy four of these tankers for £200, which is a saving of like £20 a wagon, nearly £80 in total. Sounds like an incredible value. I didn't do that, unfortunately. I did just buy one, but it's something to consider. So, no idea what to expect. Apparently, they're tin plate. That's all I know. Cost me £69. Let's open it up. Let's see what it's like and find out whether it's any good. I'm very, very intrigued by this one. That being said though, there's something endearing about this already. It's got a very homemade feel to it. I'm very entertained by the fact that the end of the box consists of just this photo, which is just being like sellotaped onto the end of it. And there's literally no explanation of the product or anything on the box. <laughs> so yeah, this is genuinely like a mystery box. Let's find out what this is like then. Let's open it up and take a look. For the first time, I should say. Right tissue paper. I'm really excited about this. I've no idea at all what to expect, except from a, a tin plate tanker. Oh, okay, okay. Cool, look at that. It's quite a substantial wagon, actually, isn't it? And made of tin, apparently. Right, so there's a card here. Wow, this has really got a homemade feel to it. Look, so you've got Dosted Trains Deluxe. Quality checked, okay, 2016. Wow, so this is five years or so ago. Um, must have been made in China, which I didn't expect. I think are those Chinese or Japanese uh, letters? I've gotten those mixed up before and uh, caused embarrassment. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, that's very interesting. I like that. So it has been quality control checked, apparently. Right, so how do I get this out? We've got some, all right, there's some cardboard protectors. Uh, there is no sort of proper blister pack or anything to protect this. Maybe it doesn't need that. Maybe it's a more simple model than I'm expecting, but let's pull it out and take a look. Okay, yeah, it is, it's definitely made of tin plate. And here it is. Wow. So this thing is totally unlike anything I've seen before. You can tell that some of the detailing is a little bit coarse on this. It's not up to sort of Dapol Helgen standards in terms of detail but there's a lot to be said for this. I do love the style of it. The fact that the chassis is die cast metal by the feel of it and that the tanker itself is made of tin plate is just fascinating to me because I've never had a model, literally never had a model produced like this before. How do you make a tanker using tin plate? Is it some complex bending method? Is it actually just cast like a, a die cast piece? Yeah, I've, it's a process that I've got no experience of at all. All right, so yeah, it feels pretty good and heavy. It's clearly got metal wheels with proper bearings and such. We'll talk more about the performance later on, but let's get this up against my white backdrop and we'll take a closer look at some of the ins and outs of it. Wow, this is gonna be very interesting. So there it is, up close and personal for you, the Bogey Tanker Wagon National Benzol. 
And I've got to be honest and say, I really, really like this piece of rolling stock. There's just something about this that I've never experienced before. Now, to be clear, if you're looking for rolling stock that's super realistic and super accurate, this is probably not going to be for you because it's a very basic wagon. Quite a lot of the detailing is quite coarse. I mean, look at this ladder, for instance. It really is just a clunky tin plate punched piece, uh, which doesn't look particularly detailed or anything like that but I really am sensing a completely different design philosophy between this tanker here and say the rolling stock that I've looked at from Dapol in O-Gage. Because you know, Dapol stuff is designed to look just like the real thing, super accurate. This thing I think is designed for a completely different reason. I think rolling stock like this is designed to just recapture the magic of train sets, recapture the idea of a full sized machine or object scaled down to small scale and just working and acting in exactly the same way but just at such a smaller scale. Because you've got areas like this on the model which don't fit together very convincingly and you've got tin plate that obviously isn't 100% straight, that's the nature of it. And then you've got bogies which have what look like real springs fitted to them and guess what there's a reason why those springs look real because if i push down the model you can see that for no reason in the world those are real springs and they do actually spring the model up and down there's no way that would bring any benefit to the model at all but just knowing that this model operates like the real thing would is absolutely fascinating to me. So yeah, there's real magic in this model and the magic does not come from the accuracy or the realism that it brings. Yeah, it's a new experience, I'll tell you. So it's very, very heavy, that's the first thing, because it is all metal, literally all metal. I don't believe there's a drop of plastic involved in this, I could be wrong. But yeah, it does weigh 494 grams, which is over six times the weight of one of those eight plank wagons I looked at from Dapol. So yeah, it's a serious piece of kit. It's not at all light and fluffy like you would expect some rolling stock to be. Like I say, the detail is fairly basic. You've got some fairly basic printing along the die-cast running plate, as you can see. It's all nicely done, though, as you can tell. The tanker itself, well, I think the whole body of the tanker is printed. I think all of the colour is printed as well, because you've got the national benzol and everything printed on, and, you know, some of the prints here are okay. They're fairly basic. You can sort of see the pixels and such. So, again, looking up close, this is not a model that you would buy for its detail. But if you look at an area of the tanker where there isn't any printing, you can still see that sort of pixely printed texture to it, which suggests that the entire surface of that tank has been printed. Yeah, it's very strange. I'm not entirely familiar with that process. It's not totally unrealistic though. I mean, if you look at the chassis, it is reasonably realistic. There are big gaps in it like there would be in real life. It's not a flat piece with molded detail and a tank plopped on top. It is more realistic than that, which is good to see. You've got these very, very large support cables here, which again are separately fitted and made of metal, and they connect up to these blocks at the end, which of course are all made of metal. If you look at the buffer beam areas, you can see we've got the three link couplings here, which are, again, fairly coarse things. They're quite large scale compared to some of the more realistic Dapol wagons. But again, nicely made. They seem to be good quality, which can't be said for some of Dapol's stuff. And the hooks here are sprung, as you can see. You can pull those out, so there's a bit of suspension there, if you will. And of course, we've got sprung buffers. Look at that. I was not expecting that on something like this. Uh, they're a little bit stiff, but they do spring, which is great to see. And it's got one or two nice touches which help to bring this thing to life. You've got these lovely gold, or well, I suppose the idea would be copper painted turning wheels there, which look really, really nice. And I suppose if I turn the thing onto its side and show you the underframe, you can see, yeah, it's all screw holes and manufacturing marks. Nothing terribly realistic about the underside of it, but do you know what? I, I, I sort of get where they're going with this, and the price very much reflects what you get, so I don't have a huge issue with it. Here's the underside of the bogies, as you can see. You can see a bit more about how they're fitted to the model. You've got the nice fine wheels. I believe these wheels are Slater's fine scale wheels. I've noticed they're sort of rusty on the axles, which isn't too great. So yeah, this has obviously suffered a little bit in the five or six years since it was quality control checked. But look at this, look at the way this wheel is continuing to spin. That's because there are proper bearings on the bogies. That's a really, really nice touch. So yeah, you can say I'm a fan of this model. Don't make any mistake if you're an O-Gage modeler that's got a very realistic layout and you want specific models of specific real-life prototypes. 
I could be wrong, but I really don't think this will be for you. If you're someone who wants to just really enjoy trains, you want to enjoy nicely made products, which this is, by the way, it's very, very nicely made, realistic in the way they work, if not in the way they look, then this is definitely something that I can recommend, provided, of course, it works as it should. I think it will. The bogies are free to turn. The couplings seem to be well designed. It's got real sprung buffers. But, come on, this wouldn't be a fun video if I didn't get the thing coupled up to a loco and running for a little while. So, yeah, let's do it, let's have some fun, let's see how well it works. I saw on the sole bar of the tanker the date 1957, so I've chosen the 08 shunter to be the guinea pig for the tanker, because obviously that is the right sort of era. Having said that, there is quite a range of these tankers available, some of them pre-war, some of them post-war. Uh, obviously this one's going to be post-war, but there is quite a range, uh, it's not just sort of one livery like I'm showing here. Right, I think I've managed to get, oh, yeah, I think that is on the track now. Yeah, it's um, sort of, yeah, pretty free rolling, does seem to slow down quite easily. In fact, there's, there's sort of like a, a crunching going on, so... I don't know, maybe the, uh, the flanges are touching some of the, the sleepers or something. Maybe. It's not a problem though, I don't think, really. Um, particularly in that direction. Seems fairly good. So I'll let it crash into the 08. Well, not crash, but meet the 08. Ooh, it's quite realistic that. I like the way those buffers interacted. Right. Go ahead then, let me see if I can couple it up. I'm going to use the three link on the tanker, obviously, to test, as opposed to the the uh, screw link on the 08. I think that will uh, that'll be the one we want to try. So let's see if it fits onto the dapple coupling hook, which it does. Oh, look at that. Are you impressed with that? That was unusually fast. I mean, no, 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 that was in line with how efficient I usually am coupling things up. <clears throat> right, okay. And there we go. So they are coupled. <laughs> I don't know what I'm seeking to demonstrate with this, but I think there's something deeply satisfying about seeing a really cool looking tanker coupled up to the 08. You know what? My only regret is <laughs> that I didn't go for the pack of four. I think knowing what I know now, four of these tankers would have been actually an awful lot of fun to run together. It would look so cool. I've only got one at the moment. I could change that maybe if I could, maybe if I bought a pack of four now, then I'd end up with five. <laughs> but it's space, isn't it? I've got to be careful with what I buy in O-Gage, otherwise it's just going to dominate my entire room and I don't have that much space left. Right, let's take it for a ride then. Let's go a bit faster. Let's see how it looks along the main street. Yeah, it looks pretty fantastic. If you use your imagination, you can see a good rake of those looking awesome. And of course, it's a bit cruel showing that thing underneath the close-up lens where some of the coarse details become obvious. Gotta say, they're not quite as obvious running up and down my straight, are they? It actually looks like a veritable wagon. And for the price I paid, it's all right, isn't it? You know, 70 quid and probably more like 60 if you want to buy four of them. And I, I imagine most people would want to rake. I mean, obviously people like me that just want one, that's fine. And it's a reasonable price. But if you want a rake, it becomes much, much more reasonable. There they are, home again. Right, okay, the part I'm not so much looking forward to is testing its performance over the points. I think if the flanges are touching the sleepers and such, that might be a problem, but got to try it. So let's see what happens. I am going to take this easy because I, I don't want to see my nice new toy clattering on the floor, but here goes nothing. Mmm, that looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? You know what that means? That means if it goes round my curve, then as far as I'm able to test it, it is 100% fit for purpose. Let's go and try it on that curve then. Right, and this is an unfortunate direction because obviously the buffers are gonna be tensioned together. <laughs> also my 08 has a dodgy buffer, as you might know. I think, as it's come out from the other side of all the furniture, that that is a successful test. It's passed every test I've thrown at it, which means it's fit for purpose. That is awesome. There it goes. So I think next I will engage the shuttle unit 
which I love by the way, it's such a cool feature to have. And we'll have it just run up and down for us. Okay, 50 speed, let's give this a try. There we go. So there it is, the Dosted, Dosted, I need to find out how to say their name. It's a bogey tanker anyway, and it has done enough, I think, to win me over. Obviously, your mileage may vary on this, and please do comment down below. Do you love this thing? Do you hate it because of its coarse detail? I certainly think this model won't be for everybody, that's certainly true, but it just happens to appeal to what I enjoy in a model. So for me personally, I am very much in favour of this model. But yeah, you will have to feedback to me and let me know what you think. Overall though, I mean, in terms of its quality, it is fairly nicely put together. It's tin plate, so the parts don't fit together as nicely as perhaps they would on an injection molded plastic body or a die cast body. Yeah, so bear that in mind. It's not as refined as, you know, Dapols or Helgens or anybody else's fine scale O-gauge rolling stock. It's a little bit more crude than that. As I say, I think that's reflected in the price. So it's not as though you're being ripped off. I think as long as you understand what it is you're buying, it's absolutely fine. No reason for complaint. And now for some ratings on the Darstead Bogey Tanker Wagon. So the level of detail, I mean, I've got to be fairly objective here because I do review much more detailed models than this. And as much as this does have some incredible features to shout about, the sprung buffers, the sprung chain link couplings, and I particularly love the real working suspension springs on the bogies. That's absolutely wonderful. There are one or two things that obviously don't match other models of a higher standard than this. I mean, the print work isn't the highest resolution and the quality of the print isn't quite up there. And like I say, quite a few of the details are reasonably coarse, but that's all reflected in the price. And I do think there's a certain charm in the level of detail. It's just my particular rating system isn't designed to favor that sort of thing. Performance though, I have given five star. I was a bit concerned to start with about the flanges being a bit large. I wondered if they might touch the sleepers and stuff. I think that's a non-issue though, because I've not noticed any problems with that since I said that it's handled my points okay. It's running fine now without any rattling or anything. Handles my very, very tight curve without any problems. The buffers seem to spring ideally on that tight curve so that there is no derailment or anything. Yeah, great performance. Quality then, I've given three and a half star. Again, there's a lot to celebrate in the quality here. The general build quality is pretty good. I like all the metal work. Again though, the decoration isn't the greatest in the world. You've got that pixelation up close. The fit of some of the components isn't quite what you'd expect on a more premium model. Again, because it's tin plated and that's just the nature of the manufacturer of this sort of thing, I suppose. And then you've got the rusty axles. Not a huge deal, it's just if a new model is arriving with bits rusty on it, I can't really let that slide, can I? But overall, yep, yeah, the quality is okay. Value for money though, I have given five stars. Uh, this cost £69.50 or £59 without tax. And of course, £200 for four of them, plus some tax presumably, is quite a good discount, isn't it? So I will give this five star. That's not a bad price at all for a piece of rolling stock as large as this. Overall then, that is a fairly decent score actually of 7.51 out of 10. Let's put that into the logbook. This is the O-Gage <laughs> rolling stock logbook, not much in here. It is second place just below the Dapol Turbot Wagon which was about the same price as this. The Dapol Turbot was obviously quite a lot smaller and lighter, much more detailed. This is larger and much more fun to use, but obviously not quite as detailed. Yeah, overall, what a lot of fun that was. I'm a huge fan of this wagon. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, folks, as much as I did. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that one. And it's weird, but I feel a sort of nostalgia for this, which makes no sense because there's nothing like this in my past for me to feel nostalgic about. I just feel like this is a model from a forgotten era, you know? Obviously it is much more refined and more detailed than the sort of 1940s or whatever Hornby tin plate O-gauge that you might have seen years and years ago, but it is sort of still indicative of that sort of era, isn't it? In terms of its charm and its uh, play value, dare I say it. Maybe that's a sacrilegious thing to say. But overall, yeah, I'm a huge fan of this. It works as it should. It looks pretty decent. It is what it is, basically. If you like it, buy one. If you don't, then don't. But I'm glad I covered this, and I may well cover more of Darsteed's wagons in the future, if that's something you'd like. I, th I believe they do coaches as well, so maybe that will be one to try, if, if they're good value like this, and I believe they are. So thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed this one. I will see you very, very soon for some more videos. You take care now. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, everybody.